out to take a nice 15-day cruise. This is the captain from the bridge. A Hong Kong resident tested positive for coronavirus. We were sure that it was not a problem. This thing was spreading through the boat. The ship will remain under quarantine for 14 days. 14 days. In a room that's four by three. Check with our medical staff if you have experienced fever, chills, cold. Oh, man, I remember when all of that was happening. That, of course, is a clip from Hell of a Cruise streaming now on Peacock. I am glad to welcome to the show today Emmy Award winning director Nick Cuesta joins us. Nick, good morning. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me. I'm so I shared with you before we got started. I literally had to pull myself away. I was almost late for the show today because I was so enthralled with the screener that we had of this Hell of a Cruise documentary. Um, first, let's go back. I remember watching this play out. Let's be honest, it was only you know two years ago we were seeing this happen and hearing about it, working at a news station and things. And to be able to see a documentary you know, so quickly, what was it for you that you were like, I wanna dive in, people have stories that they wanna share? Well, the Diamond Princess incident was particularly interesting to us because it was the first super spreader event outside of China. So, um, we, you know, documentaries tell stories through people's actual accounts. So when we when Spencer came to us with the footage, he came to, to Matt and to me with the footage, we um, were like, this is an excellent way to tell uh, to use a microcosm to tell a very big story. So you tell use small details to tell a very big story. That's what we're trying to do with Hell of a Cruise. And again, you know, to tell this big story, we were all kind of part of it when things were unraveling, but to see what was happening inside, I didn't want to stop watching because again, you knew that as you were seeing them have fun when the cruise first took off, you knew what was next. You knew they would end up in their rooms. To be able to see that though firsthand as a filmmaker, having that cell phone video, how much more personal or poignant does it make a message that like you're trying to tell in this? Well, it's, that's what it's all about, is how do you create emotionality out of experience? And the actual footage was so useful because it contextualizes the interview with the, with the, the passengers. So they're explaining what their experience is like while you're seeing what they saw. So it, it's, it's, um, it's, it, it, it's, it's, that's the, that, that's the fundamental basis of, of, of how we, you know, tell a story in a, you know, a, in a, you know, in a dynamic and interesting way. Before we it's get to that. It's not meant to be a, a lesson. It's meant to be a, um, a, a, you know, you're meant to feel what it was like to be on there with the people. Well, and before we get, get to the bigger picture that I think that, you know, kind of unravels too with this documentary, you know, talking about the personal aspects like you just touched on, I feel like it's a situation that we put ourselves in their shoes. You know, you, you feel like, okay, what would I feel like if I was in this? I couldn't imagine being in this small room and especially this line here, turning the floating paradise into an infested jail. What were you most moved about as a filmmaker and being able to go through hours and hours of footages to put this together? Well, what was most moving was actually the interviews with the passengers. So when we uh, would talk to them, we were very careful about, um, you know, their memories were very clear and distinct to them and we didn't want them to to you know to go and revisit the sort of trauma that they'd had during these experiences in the interview so it's a very delicate balance of trying to to create emotionality but not to victimize them or, or re-traumatize them interesting and you can feel that you are you know able to do that i mean that was one of the things that i enjoyed just feeling like i was there based on these first-hand accounts um let's talk big picture though because this kind of does expose an issue that many people may not be aware of. You kind of take it that in the second portion of the documentary, talk about what you were able to unravel and even moving forward, what we need to keep in mind. Well, so the Diamond Princess goes all the way to the, the, the desk of the president. Um, and um, uh, so what I'd like people to understand is that 
when we are faced with a, another infectious disease challenge, that we can potentially talk about this as a public health issue and not as a political issue, and that perhaps that we could um, uh, look at things that are basic public health policy, you know, you know, standard public health precautions, and we can and think about coming together to 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 face an adversary together rather than divide ourselves as a country. I mean, you could see, you can feel that divide, you know, in watching this hell of a cruise. Again, streaming now on Peacock, we only have a few seconds left. Why do you think it was so important to do a documentary now? Because again, we're still living with COVID. We're still having the issues of it. It is in very recent memory when 2020 happened and this cruise ship was out there. Do you think that was important for you to do it now instead of like waiting until it's more in the rear view mirror? I think that, yes, I think so. I think that because we're still in the middle of a pandemic, we should be looking at, you know, a, a good public health policy personally. So, you know, you could see what happens when it goes wrong. So hopefully we don't go any more wrong in the future. And I hope this is kind of maybe even launch stuff for you. Maybe you'll see yourself making more films like this in the future, kind of with this public health. It almost seems like you changed perhaps as a director. A little bit. But remember, I was also making a film with the Proud Boys at the same time. So, um, um, you know, I'll, I'll probably be spending more time with, um, with uh, you know, with the Proud Boys and, and other, other, other members of that community coming up. Will you come back and join us sometime? Because, again, I love your work. We all can learn something from it. Will you come back? Because I would love to check in with you more. Oh, I'd be delighted. Perfect. Nick, thank you again. Keep up the great work. One more time, the hell of a cruise streaming now on Peacock. Take care, okay? Great. Thank you so much.